Hello everybody. So we have another week of art lessons here at the Brookings Arts Council and as always my name is Shelby and today we're going to be working on doing some stained glass window I call it project. Um, so for that project you're going to need a piece of paper. Um, I just have a white piece. Um, white would be best but if you have only colored paper we can make that work. I do have some special kind of scotch tape. It's called like washi tape. It's kind of fun. It's not super sticky which is kind of the key with this project but like masking tape should work fine. I wouldn't use like clear scotch tape though because I think it'll rip your paper. But um Masking tape should be fine. This like little washi tape stuff that's like kind of colored. I think you can buy it at Walmart too. It is the Scotch brand as well. Scotch Expressions it's called. Um, that should be fine. Um, but yeah, no, no like clear tape or like packing tape because I think it'll rip your paper. But so first off here, we're going to start and we're just going to rip out some pieces of tape. And I'm going to section, I'm going to use it to section off places on the piece of paper to kind of create some different negative spaces that we're going to color in with um, some sort of material to color with. I have crayons here. You can use colored pencils or markers or crayons like I am. Or if your paint parents allow you to, um, you can always use paint as well. So I'm just going to start by just kind of adding a line across where I want my paper to be blocked off at. So I just got that going and you're going to keep adding them back and forth so you get some different kind of shapes in there to fill in. So if it's important to you that they're all rectangles or they're all like diamond shaped or um, triangles, then we need to be thinking about that as we're putting down the tape. For me, like I'm kind of alright with like, kind of whatever. I'm not super picky on the shapes. I just want to have some big ones and some large ones. That's what I'm concerned about. So I'm going to add a couple more pieces of tape here and I'll show you kind of what we're working with. And when you're adding the tape to, it's really kind of important that you're going all the way across. You don't want your tape to end like halfway through. So you need it to make sure that it goes kind of edge to edge, whichever edge you are using. And I'll get a couple more on here. And then I'll show you. So I'll add a couple more pieces before I start coloring. But kind of the thing we got going here is see that's always going from end to end. Like I don't have a piece of tape that ends in the middle there because you will kind of see the outline of that tape. And it just looks a little funky. It kind of makes it hard to section things off properly. Um, so I'm going to break off. I guess if you don't want it like edge to edge, like as long as it, here I'll show you this one. Because this one's not going to be edge to edge, but it's going to, it'll still, it'll still work. So mine, this piece right here, my paper is sticking to the table. This piece right here doesn't go edge to edge, but it is ending off like right within that other tape piece. So that you can do that too. So I'm just going to add like, I think two, maybe one more piece of tape. And then I'll kind of show you what we're working with. If you are using masking tape, I would recommend kind of pulling the tape off like that. And maybe if you're wearing like a sweater or jeans, just to kind of like put it on your clothes. So it like kind of attaches some stuff just so it's not so sticky. Because you don't want, we'll be taking off this tape. And you don't want it to rip your paper after you've done, um, spent all your time like coloring so nicely. So you want to make sure that with that you aren't removing kind of really super sticky tape and it's pulling pieces off your paper. Another solution to that would be using just like a heavier paper, not using just like printer paper from the computer. Um, but I know that some of you aren't, don't really have access to that. So I'm, I'm just kind of leaving it up to you to kind of manage. So we're left with this. So they're all kind of ending off on they're all pretty manageable size squares. And so then we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna color a couple of these in for you. And again, as always, like with a lot of my lessons that I'm giving you, I'm really wanting you to think a lot about like color and what colors you're using and kind of why, and maybe some different color schemes that you associate, that like are associated with those colors. So if you're doing like a primary color scheme, a primary color scheme is red, yellow, and blue sorry space there for a minute it's been a long day or secondary colors which are the colors that the primary colors like if you mix primary colors they make those so orange yellow and purple which is personally probably my favorite color scheme it's what I'm gonna be coloring on here um, analogous so like three 
um, colors next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, like um, green, yellow green, and yellow. So they're all colors that are really kind of close together. Maybe they, you mix two to make the other one and they always go together really well. You could use complementary colors, which end up being um, the opposites. So red and green, so Christmas colors, or they end up being like a lot of sports team colors. So um, orange and blue or yellow and purple is the other pairing there. But just making sure that you're kind of using a color scheme that makes sense to you and kind of you understand where it's coming from. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about color schemes just cause like color is so much fun and it's so easy to want to make everything like rainbow color, which is fine, but I think sometimes it's good to like kind of scale back and maybe use some things that are, you know, like two or three colors. I think, I think that those are pretty fun too. And you can always do color mixing and things like that to get different tints and shades of those colors. So I'm gonna color in here. I'm gonna do, like I said, the yellow or the orange, green and purple. So the secondary color scheme. And I'm just gonna color in the square here. And so the object of this is that it's gonna look like stained glass. So at the end of this, you'll have this all colored in, all around the tape, you'll keep the tape on until you're done coloring. And then when you're done coloring, you're gonna take off the tape. So you have those really kind of fine, crisp lines where the tape was blocking off the paper. And so again, with paint too, with paint, sometimes paint bleeds underneath the tape, so that's something to look out for. But with crayons, like you have just kind of that control to just really fill in that square as precisely as you want without a lot of like thinking. And I'm just gonna pull up this piece of tape here so you can see that crisp line. And I will attach a picture of when I'm done. See that really crisp line there? It wasn't any kind of effort really to me. And it's just an easy way to kind of section off your paper and get some good negative space in there to work with to do something like this. So I will post a list of the supplies. And in that list of supplies, I'll include um, an example. So I'll finish this one up and I'll post that out there for you guys to look at too, just so you have some sort of reference. But I hope you enjoyed today. And as always, please let me know if there's any lessons that you would like me to teach you how to do that I haven't. Or if you want to show me kind of your final products from any of these, please, please email us, um, find us on Facebook, tag us in your images. Um, but have a good night and I'll see you next week.